Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Uh, I ran across this website here, this web page, that uh, purports to have clever questions atheists can't answer. Now I've run through this once, uh, once through, and uh, I know that the quality of the questions is pretty low. Uh, this is kind of what I would expect from uh, a website of this ilk. Uh, but the reason I'm going to go through this, I'm going to go through and talk about these questions. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is that the creationists uh, have not improved their game uh, over the past three and a half years since this, uh, this page purportedly went online. And I have no reason to doubt the date on the page. Anyway, this purports to be a thing to Christians. Uh, but it talks about creationists a lot. Uh, so uh, it, it's clearly uh, intended as a sort of Christian propaganda, uh, but it's so poorly done that uh, there, there are much better questions for atheists type lists out there that are much more uh, thought-provoking and uh, potentially debate-inducing. Uh, and even those tend to be relatively easily debunked when thought about critically. Well, that's not what I'm, he I'm, I'm going to do here. I'm going to give my honest reaction to these. Now, full disclosure, uh, this is the second take. The first take ran way too long. And it's not clear that I stayed on topic appropriately. So I'm doing this once more. But now that I know that there's a ridiculous number of questions here, I can blast through uh, some of them that are just uh, redundant or uh, basically have the same answer as previous ones. Okay, so uh, as you can see on the screen here, we've got the uh, introduction, which is Dear Christians. Uh, are you tired of atheists claiming they are more intellectual and smarter than Christians? Do you want to continue the good fight against the sat satanic secular machine that has hijacked this nation, presumably the United States, from being Christian? Look no further. Here are a bunch of clever questions you can ask atheists. When they fail to answer these questions, show them the truth from the Bible and watch as they are led to the light. Okay, this introduction really gives you some idea on the quality of these questions. Satanic secular machine? Well, that's kind of prejudging things, don't you think? Um, and it pretty much sets the agenda of the uh, writer here. Uh, and, and then apparently this uh, secular machine has somehow hijacked uh, the nation from being Christian. Uh, well, no, it, it really hasn't. Uh, you... Uh, presuming this refers to the United States, you need to look at a United States history. Uh, the freedom of belief was uh, uh, an important thing for the uh, founding fathers, as I understand it. I'm Canadian. I don't have a solid grounding in American history, although American history is a big part of Canadian history. So I do have some passing familiarity with it. Now... Uh, the, this whole thing alleges that the questions that follow are clever. Uh, you will see very quickly, if you look at them with a critical eye, that they are, they are anything but clever. Uh, they are agenda-driven questions, clearly so. Many of them commit logical fallacies right in the question or have assumptions that uh, uh, don't follow. There's a lot of non-sequiturs and things like that. And uh, some of these questions can't be answered. And, uh, you know, if you fail to answer the question, well, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't reflect badly on you. Uh, and then there's the assumption that somehow the Bible is somehow true, that it is the uh, absolute truth and that there's somehow, uh, you, you know, it lead you into the light, whatever that means. Presumably that's conversion to this fellow's particular uh, version of Christianity. Now, uh, the thing about the Bible, and I'll just mention this once at the start here. 
The Bible is a collection of books. It's an anthology that uh, was that includes works written by many different pe uh, people, mostly men, I'm sure, uh, of the Judeo-Christian tradition who were writing over the space of many centuries from many different perspectives in many different contexts. And they were writing for uh, various reasons, uh, most of which we don't know. And as a result, there's a lot of contradictions. Uh, because beliefs changed over the, that length of time quite a bit. And the circumstances changed uh, quite a bit over that length of time as well. Uh, furthermore, uh, note that this, uh, this uh, site is in English. Uh, we're talking about this from an English-speaking perspective. And that means that much of what people think the Bible says has come through at least one, often two or three, translation steps. And as a result, uh, the meanings and so on have been mangled a bit over time. So people don't, like what you think the Bible says, probably isn't what it said to the people 2,000 years ago, if you're looking at the Old Testament, or 1,500 years ago when you're looking at the New Testament. It probably meant different things then than it does in the English translation now. So this is an important point. And just by that alone, it is highly unlikely that the Bible is the word of any particular God. Uh, if it were, then there would be absolutely no ambiguities in translation because this God would have provided the Bible in perfect meaning in all languages for all people. And there wouldn't be any human translation involved or any human writers necessary or anything like that. Uh, th th there'd be no, no point in doing something that convoluted, right? So that is enough to leave me skeptical at the very least. It doesn't disprove God, by the way, but it certainly doesn't pr uh, look good for the Bible being the word of God, given that it was written by many different men over many hundreds of years. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm just going to leave off there. I Basically what I'm saying is... Appeal to the Bible does not prove anything. Any more than appeal to authority of any kind proves anything. So any bit in the questions where it asserts that the Bible is somehow true, that is already a non sequitur or a fallacy of some kind. So now let me get on to the questions. I'm quite a time into this already, so let's get on to the questions. So first off, question number one, and there's 40-odd of them, so this is going to be long. Question number one, if creationists can't do science, then why do Kent Hovind and Dwayne T. Gish, who are creation scientists, have professional degrees in science? Well, first off, anybody worth their salt will not claim that a creationist can't do science as a general claim. Uh, mostly what people will claim is that creationism is not science. And the reason it's not science is because, as a hypothesis, it's not falsifiable. There is no possible way to falsify it. Science must work on something that you can falsify. Or, in some corner cases, that you can actually prove. Uh, but you need something that you can falsify. And creationism, as it's framed, cannot be falsified. So that, therefore, pretty much means that it isn't science. Uh, I don't know what a creation scientist is. Maybe they mean creationist scientists? Hard to say. You'll see later some of the questions have some serious grammatical faults. 
Uh, how can they have professional degrees in science? Easy. They went and studied, passed the courses, got the paper. That's, that is the entirety of it. Uh, just because they believe in something that may not be true, creationism, doesn't mean they can't be effective scientists in other fields. So, you know, I'll just leave it at that. Two, if dinosaurs turned into birds, why are we not afraid of them? Well, first of all, this is a fundamental misunderstanding of how evolution works. Dinosaurs didn't turn into birds. The descendants of some species of dinosaurs may have evolved into birds. But dinosaurs didn't turn into birds. Evolution happens over a very long time scale, over many, many generations. And at no point, at no generation along the way, is the child of a different species than the parent. I think that think about that. There is no cut point in at any point where suddenly you have a new species. This happens over time very slowly and uh, various mutations that prove to be beneficial or not detrimental accumulate and eventually you end up with something that is describable as a different species. And that may not be able that may not be co-fertile with the other species okay that is uh, evolution so this question as written is a fundamental misunderstanding of it but here's the thing why aren't we afraid of birds well simply because most birds are not a threat that's why simple simple right there uh, most of what we're afraid of we learn to be afraid of because our parents tell us it's dangerous, or we observe that it's dangerous, or it causes us trouble. Uh, we have no reason to be afraid of birds in general. They don't cause us trouble. They're not dangerous to us in the general case. So, therefore, we are not afraid of birds in general. That's why we're not afraid of them. It doesn't matter where how they came to be. They're not dangerous to us, so we're not afraid of them. Three, if homosexuality is right, then how come two people of the same sex not produce a child? There's first of the grammatical problems, obvious grammatical problems. Well, first of all, whether homosexuality is right or not doesn't matter. It just is. Uh, and how come two people of the same sex not produce a child? Well, simply because biology doesn't allow that to happen. It's just the way biology works, the way our bi biology works. It doesn't say anything about the rightness or the wrongness of homosexuality that uh, a homosexual couple cannot have a child, uh, biologically. It doesn't say anything about that. Uh, and the fact that they can't produce a child doesn't say anything about the rightness or wrongness of homosexuality. These two things do not, are, are not a, are not variables that are directly related to each other. There may well be reasons for homosexuality exists from an evolutionary standpoint. Yeah, we don't know what they are necessarily. Uh, or it may just be that it's not detrimental to species survival, so it survived. But there you have it. Uh, this question itself is kind of a non sequitur. Oh, and by the way, most homosexual people are fertile, and they can, in fact, if they couple with uh, a member of the opposite sex, produce children. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, four, what purpose do we have if evolution is real? What purpose do we have if evolution is not real? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we are. Uh, it doesn't matter if we have a purpose or not. Uh, purpose is not required to exist. Uh, so let me just leave it at that. Uh, what purpose? doesn't matter. Uh, our purpose could be simply to exist. Uh, who knows? But even if a creator created us, that doesn't mean we have any better purpose for existing. 
The creator may have created us just for a lark or just because, in which case we have no more, re no more purpose in existing than if we arise randomly as would be the, or, well, not purely, purely randomly, but through evolution as, as, uh, this question suggests, uh, in either of those two cases, we would have no particular purpose. It, it, it doesn't matter. This doesn't prove anything one way or the other. Uh, five, you say Jesus never existed, but have you heard of the Shroud of Turin? Okay, first of all, this is a non sequitur. Uh, whether Jesus existed or not doesn't have any bearing on, on anything. And uh, uh, whether I've heard of the Shroud of Turin doesn't have any bearing on whether Jesus existed or not. Um, this might just be a snarky way of saying, but the Shroud of Turin exists and that proves Jesus. Except for it doesn't. Uh, there isn't any particular uh, compelling evidence that the Shroud of Turin is even genuine. Uh, let alone that it demonstrates that Jesus existed. Uh, we don't actually know uh, if the Shroud of Turin is authentic. Uh, there is some evidence that some guy probably existed about 2,000 years ago and uh, was probably born in uh, Jerusalem and, and was, uh, or what was called Jerusalem at the time, and was probably crucified by the Romans. There is some evidence that a guy probably existed. Uh, okay, fine. That doesn't prove that he was divine. It doesn't really prove much of anything. And uh, it's not clear that the Shroud of Turin even was this guy's shroud or if even he had a shroud. Uh, we, we don't have a time machine. We can't go back and look. That's the thing. Uh, maybe the Shroud of Turin is legitimate. Maybe it is this Jesus guy's shroud, but that still doesn't prove anything about the nature of this Jesus guy. Okay. Um, number six, why do we not see human humans being born in the zoos from monkeys if we came from monkeys? Uh, well, this is fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. And there's a several more questions like this later on. Uh, and I'll just refer to them saying fundamental misunderstanding of uh, evolution and leave it at that. But first of all, my understanding here, and I may be wrong, is that we are not in the same evolutionary family branch uh, of uh, primates as monkeys are, we are apes, as I understand it. Monkeys and apes are not the same thing. But let's just assume that uh, we came from monkeys, uh, if, assuming some colloquialism here or misunderstanding of the term monkey. Um, okay, fine. Uh, why do we not see humans being born in zoos from monkeys? Well, because evolution doesn't work that way. Uh, it takes, as I said, many, many generations of accumulated mutation to end up with a new species. And at no point is a child of one uh, creature a different species from its parent. At no point in the evolutionary process is the, are the parent and child different species. So this is a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution, and therefore it, the question itself is wrong. And it doesn't prove anything one way or the other. Whether, even if we saw humans being born in zoos from monkeys, it wouldn't prove anything. Uh, or disprove anything, actually. Well, it might disprove some bits of evolution, but it wouldn't really prove creationism, uh, or Christianity for that matter. Uh, seven, why do we go to church if God is not real? I don't know. Why do you go to church? Seriously. Uh, why does anyone go to church? Every person has their own reason for going to church. And uh, I would think, for the most part, it has nothing to do with God. It's probably more because that's where the community gathers or something like that. But here's the thing. I don't go to church. I am an atheist. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know... Uh, but but that doesn't prove anything. Uh, why do you, why do you go to church? Maybe because you believe God is real. It doesn't matter if He's real or not. You you know you believe He's real, and that's your reason for going. But that doesn't make Him real. Okay. 
Uh, question number eight, how did the Grand Canyon form? Well, this one's easy. Uh, erosion due to running water over a long period of time. That's it. Seriously, that is it. That's all it takes to form the Grand Canyon. A river flowing for a long enough period of time will eventually erode a valley like that in a land situation very much like you see around the Grand Canyon. And we see the same effect elsewhere, like the Red Deer River Valley around Drumheller. Um, we get the same type of landforms, and it's caused the same way. Uh, and, you know, this doesn't, just because you don't know how the mechanics of, of erosion work, doesn't mean that erosion doesn't work. Um, nine, do you know that Jesus loves you? No, I do not know that Jesus loves me. The whole reason I don't know that is I don't know that he still exists if he even did exist. Uh, and what does this have to do with anything? It, it, it's kind of a non sequitur, really. Uh, it doesn't follow from anything and nothing follows from it. Maybe there's a Jesus guy out there that loves me. Great, all the power to him. It doesn't matter to me and it doesn't prove God. It doesn't prove creationism. Uh, okay, 10. If Christianity is false, then why is it popular? And this is another thing that we that will come up again in these questions. Uh, popularity doesn't prove something true. This is an appeal to authority or an appeal to populism. It doesn't prove something is true just to say that it's popular. People believe a great many things that we can prove that are not true. So... Just because people believe something, it doesn't make it true. If you say Christianity is not true, then why do hundreds of people continue to become saved every day? Well, first of all, become saved doesn't mean anything. Saved by whom from what? Um, I'm assuming this is a euphemism for convert to Christianity. So people, as I said, will believe any number of things. So if you take some gullible people and convince them that Christianity is the thing that they should believe in, or you wave guns at them and say they have to believe in Christianity or say they do or whatever, then uh, they'll probably convert. But guess what? It goes the other way too. Uh, there are hundreds of Christians converting to other religions or deconverting altogether into atheism or whatever every day as well. So... Uh, this doesn't prove Christianity true or false. It just has no effect on anything. Twelve. Why do we not see half trees and half carrots, frunkies, whatever a frunky is, and crocoducts if evolution is real? This is a fundamental misunderstanding about how, the, how evolution works. Uh, it doesn't need any further answer than that. But let me just say that half tree, half carrot plants... Uh, I don't see that that would have any survival benefit for the plant. I don't know what a frunky is, assuming it's a hybrid of some kind. Um, but the other part of the hybrid, assuming one part's monkey, uh, would, uh, would obviously have to be cross-fertile with the other half the, the, uh, in order to have a hybrid like that. Um, crocoducks, same thing. So it's unlikely that you have a crocoduck because they're not cross-fertile. Um, but the lack of existence of these things does not disprove evolution. It just, prove, just proves we don't have frunkies and crocoducks, right? So uh, seriously, it doesn't disprove evolution. And even if we were able to create a half-tree, half-carrot plant, doesn't prove evolution either okay uh, so even if we can create a hybrid these hybrids it doesn't prove evolution uh, it also doesn't disprove it uh, why is Richard Dawkins afraid to debate debate Ray Comfort okay well this is not something you ask a random person this is something you ask Richard Dawkins and this has an assumption built in that he's afraid of a, of a debate with Ray Comfort, whoever the hell Ray Comfort is. Uh, if he is afraid, you'd have to ask him why he's afraid. If he's not afraid, 
yet then you have to ask him why he doesn't want to debate Ray Comfort. You'd have to ask Mr. Dawkins that. This is not a general question for atheists. 14. Did you know Christopher Hitchens was saved before death? Again, I'm assuming saved is a euphemism for convert to Christianity. No, I didn't know. And I don't even know this who the, really this Hitchens guy is. I've heard his name, but I don't know who he is. I'm an atheist. Whatever. Doesn't mean I know this Hitchens guy, right? Or worship at his feet or anything like that. And quite frankly, if he converted to Christianity before he died, that's his business. Sure, I might think he's an idiot for converting to something that has no evidence, but that's his business. He's allowed to believe whatever he wants. Uh, and whether I know this or not doesn't affect the uh, truthfulness or uh, falseness of uh, Christianity or creationism or evolution. You may have noticed there's a lot of conflation of creationism, evolution, and Christianity here. Um, 15. Are you aware Ray Comfort disproved atheism with a banana? I seem to recall watching at least one video debunking that proof. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that here because I can't remember the specific details, but uh, clearly this Ray Comfort guy is an idiot uh, if he thinks a banana disproves atheism. Atheism exists. Disproving atheism doesn't make it not exist, even if you think you've disproved it. Atheism is simply the lack of belief in a god. If there is a god, atheism still exists because, uh, well, if someone doesn't believe in that god, they're still an atheist, right? But uh, proving that atheism is wrong, that there is a god, fine. If you can have this God person come and talk to me and prove that he's God, and by the way, if he if he's a Christian God, he will know how to prove that to me, even if I don't. Um, okay, fine. That would be proof that God exists and therefore proof that atheism is wrong. But a banana doesn't do that. Uh, and if you want to look up the uh, debunking of it, uh, I'm sure there's more than one. Uh, so you can just search around. You'll probably find it. Uh, but seriously. Uh, and here's the thing. I was, wasn't necessarily aware of this Ray Comfort guy. Uh, I, I still don't know who he is. And I may have encountered a debunking video of the banana thing. But I still don't know who he is. And I'm seriously skeptical that a banana can disprove atheism. Uh, it's just a berry that happens to uh, have a particular shape and people eat them. Like, seriously. Uh, 16. Why do people laugh at evolutionists? The same reason they laugh at anyone else. Because they find it funny. Uh, why they find it funny? Who knows. But this doesn't prove anything one way or the other. Uh, how did planets form when the Big Bang explosion all of a sudden happened? Yay for grammar! After all, you don't see round objects form when something blows up. Well, yeah. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of how the Big Bang works, for one. And for two, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of the sheer magnitude of the Big Bang, which encompassed absolutely everything that we can see and a whole bunch we can't see. Um, and this happened a mind-bogglingly long time ago. And even if the Big Bang was a classical explosion, any imperfections in the distribution of the matter in the shockwave would have accumulated... Uh, over time as the outward force of the shock wave diminished with distance and time and the local uh, interactions with matter within the shock wave started to dominate. Uh, so at that point, then you'd start to have gravitational coalescing happen and then you start getting round things because that's what happens with something with sufficient mass, it gets pulled into some sort of a ball just because of the way gravity works, okay? Uh, 
But the Big Bang was not a classical explosion. What expanded from that explosion is all of space and time. And the lumpiness of the stuff that started out after the Big Bang is what allowed galaxies and planets and so on to happen. Uh, but we're, you know, we're looking at like 9 billion years from the uh, Big Bang to the formation of the planets in our solar system. That's a long time. So there was plenty of time for the violence of the explosion to settle down. Uh, and once the power of the shockwave peters out to something mostly negligible, it doesn't matter anymore and things, other forces take over. Uh, okay, 18. If evolution is real, how can it explain gravity, angular momentum, human emotions, and why we worship God? Again, we've got a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. Gravity and angular momentum have nothing to do with evolution. They're the environment. Uh, they may drive some of the evolutionary selection pressure, but they are not part of evolution. They didn't evolve. Human emotions, uh, that they evolved probably because they were beneficial to uh, species survival. Uh, why we worship God is uh, probably because we didn't want, we didn't understand stuff, so we made up stories. Seriously, that's probably it right there. And by the way, I don't worship God. I'm an atheist. 19. How did pond scum make living things appear out of nowhere? Simple answer, it didn't. Pond scum is living things. Um, I'm not going to answer where did pond scum come from. Uh, because the question says, pond scum making living things appear. It didn't. Uh, if they're talking about primordial soup, the primordial soup, then chemistry caused it. Okay, 20. How can evolution be true if we don't see pocket watches or airplanes formed by themselves? Again, a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution, but also just because something didn't happen doesn't mean evolution isn't right. Uh, there's plenty of things that didn't appear. Plenty of them. A great many more things that didn't appear than did appear as a result of evolution on Earth. The fact that they didn't appear says nothing about evolution being true or false. I, there's not, nothing more I can say about that. Something not happening that could happen doesn't disprove the process that might have caused it to happen. And unpack that and figure that out. Uh, 21. Did you know that dinosaurs and man lived together? No, I didn't because they didn't. Uh, unless you're talking about the descendants of, dinos of certain dinosaurs that evolved eventually into birds. In which case, I guess maybe you have a point, but this, I think, is not what you mean. Uh, no, humans and dinosaurs did not live together a la the Flintstones. Uh, humans as we know them, uh, creatures that look vaguely human as we know them, did not evolve until the last million years or so. Uh, it might be two or three million years, but uh, dinosaurs as I think you mean them, died out 60-odd million years ago. So no, we did not exist at the same time. Uh, 22, if evolution is real, then why do caring people like Rick Santorum argue that it must be challenged in the classroom? Well, the fact that somebody's arguing that something must be challenged does not make it false. It just means that if it is true, then the guy arguing against it is misinformed. Uh, it doesn't prove or disprove anything. Uh, 23, why are YouTube atheists like Aaron Ra and Thunderfoot afraid to debate Ray Comfort? This is exactly the same question as the Dawkins one, and it has the same answer. You have to ask them if they're even afraid of, of the debate and why they don't want to debate. Uh, and I think in the case of Thunderfoot, I don't think he's even afraid to do the debate. Um but anyway, it's the same question asked with different uh, principles, uh, you know, different people in it. Uh, 24, why do we celebrate Christmas if Christianity is not real? Yeah, because it's fun. Uh, and besides, uh, Christmas has its roots in pagan uh, festivals uh, that predate Christianity. 
So uh, why do we celebrate Christmas? Uh, it's actually a much bigger thing than that. It's actually, uh, I think it has its roots in the solstice celebration. And uh, quite frankly, why not have a party in the middle of winter? Uh, you know, like the dead, dead of winter when things are, you know, unpleasant or whatever. Why not? Seriously. Uh, this was the darkest time of the year, the most the most uh, terrifying time of year, uh, the most dangerous time of year, potentially, in Europe, for instance. Uh, so why not celebrate? Uh, we've got nothing better to do in like, the shortest days of the year, right? And we we're probably afraid the sun wouldn't come back. So why do we still celebrate Christmas? Well, because why not? Uh, really, uh, that's what it comes down to. Why not? Uh, and a lot of non-Christians enjoy Christmas just fine. Uh, anyway. Uh, wow. Mouse skills for the win. 25. If creationists can't do science, then why does the website Answers in Genesis have proven science articles from creationists that do science? Well, I can't speak for Answers in Genesis. Um, but I already spoke to creationists doing science, and they can certainly do science. Creationism, however, is not science. Uh, and I've, I think I've already mentioned why that is. Uh, and I haven't looked at these proven science articles from creationists that do science on Answers in Genesis, so I don't know how good those articles actually are or how proven they are. Uh, but either way, this doesn't prove anything about creationism, Christianity, or atheism, one way or the other. 26. If evolution is true, why can't white people compete to be good in basketball like black people? After all, white people can't jump. This one doesn't even make any sense. Total non sequitur. There are white people that are good at basketball, and there are white people in the NBA. Uh, why are there more black people playing basketball? It, assuming there are, uh, well, probably because more black people want to play basketball. That's really what it comes down to in this. White people can't jump BS is just, quote, just, just quoting a meme. And, uh, you know, white people can jump just fine. There are lots of black people that don't jump any better than the supposed white people that can't jump. Like the musculature to jump is present in all of us. Okay. 27. Where do you decide to fit God in your everyday life if you don't believe in him? Well, simple. I don't. If I don't believe in God, why would I bother fitting him into my life? This is a stupid question. And I know some people think there's no such thing as a stupid question. Well, this is a stupid question. Okay. Let's see if we can get through the rest of this quickly here because it's coming up on 40 minutes. Um, okay, 28. Why is Christianity the fastest growing religion if it's false? Well, whether it's growing fast or not has nothing to do with its, uh, whether it's true or false. Why is it the fastest growing? Well, if it actually is, it's the fastest growing because people are just, just believing in it. Like, seriously, that's all it means. Um, 29. Do you feel free to commit murders, homosexuality, go to strip bars, steal, commit adultery, and do other sins since you believe there is no God? No, I don't. No, but I want to. I have a bone to pick with this question because this has sort of a arson, murder, and jaywalking feel to it. Uh, homosexuality is only a sin if you believe it is, uh, and quite frankly, it just is. And whether it's uh, how do you commit homosexuality anyway? You either are or you aren't homosexual. Uh, what's wrong with going to strip bars? Uh, I, I don't see see anything particularly wrong with that. Uh, as long as the entertainment is not being coerced into doing it. Uh, stealing, committing murders, committing adultery, you know, other sins. Why not do them? Well... Because they create chaos, uh, and I don't want to be the victim of them. Uh, seriously, it's all completely selfish. Uh, it, it, uh, why do I need God to tell me something is not beneficial to me in general? Uh, or beneficial to people I care about, right? 
it, it, it doesn't follow. Uh, 30. Why do the fossils say no to evolution? Well, they don't. Fossils, the fossil record, is one of the big things that supports evolution. Uh, 31. Why did Darwin admit that how the eye formed is impossible? Well, I'm not clear that he actually did uh, admit anything of the sort. He may have admitted that he didn't understand how it could be formed, but it doesn't mean it was impossible, that, that he thought it was impossible. Um, and, and because Darwin didn't know something doesn't, make, doesn't mean that uh, evolution's wrong either. Uh, much of our current theory of evolution is built on Darwin's uh, formulation of origin of species, but he wasn't right about everything. Uh, we have finessed the theory over time, but there's enough uh, evidence that suggests it's true that uh, we have no reason to really uh, assume that it's not. And we have done uh, we have done uh, computer simulations and developed computer software even using evolutionary processes and got stuff that was immensely more complicated than we expected. So complexity does not rule out evolution. Okay, 32. Where did everything come from if there is no God? Who knows? Maybe it's always been there. Uh, maybe it appeared out of nowhere. Maybe it's all an illusion. Who knows? But let's just assume that God caused everything to be, then where did God come from? Like you, you can't have a, you, you, cause that, that would be special pleading. If you say God was always there, but uh, everything else had to come from somewhere. So this question basically codifies a fallacy. So even if God, where did God come from? Right. Uh, 33, if there is no God, then why do we have laws of governance, such as speed limits? Well, mostly because we thought they were a good idea. Uh, and seriously, God didn't say anything about speed limits, so we had to make that up all on our own anyway. So, seriously, why do we have laws of governance? Because we found that it was convenient to keep the chaos at bay. Really, that's what it comes down to. 34, do you know where you are going when you die? No. I don't know where I'm going when I die. Uh, but after I die, I won't be, so I won't be around to go at all, anywhere. But where am I going when I die? I won't know that till I'm dying. I might be sitting in a chair. Oh, of course, this is talking about the afterlife thing, of course. Uh, no, I don't believe there's an afterlife. I think after I die, I just won't be. And as a result, I won't be worried about anything because I won't be in order to be worried, right? I won't be anything at all. I'll just be, I'll just not exist. The same way I didn't exist before I was born, which didn't cause me any particular strain and won't cause me any particular strain after, after I no longer exist. That doesn't mean I want to die, but seriously, I... And maybe if there maybe there is an afterlife, and I might be pleasantly surprised to find out there is one. But uh, as it stands right now, where am I going when I die? I'm not going anywhere. I'm just not going to be. Uh, Thirty-five. Why do we not act like monkeys if it is true that we came from monkeys? Well, uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't come from monkeys. For one, we came from apes because we are apes, I guess. But Aside from that, we do pretty much act like monkeys. Uh, assuming monkeys is kind of a colloquialism for some sort of a primate. Uh, we behave very much like uh, our uh, ape cousins and monkey cousins. Uh, you know, we're animals. But we have, some, have significant differences as well. Uh, we have uh, bigger brains uh, and... Uh, you know, many thousands of years of social evolution, uh, mimetic evolution uh, under our belts, as well as uh, the adaptations we have that have served us so well for using tools and so on. So 
Uh, seriously. Um, we probably, if, if, if you study us and these so-called monkeys closely, you'll find that a lot of what we do is very much like what they do. Uh, so, seriously. But also, this is a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. 36. Why do we display the Ten Commandments in courtrooms if you say the Bible is not real? Well, because somebody decided to put up the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. That, that's the whole of it. Uh, the Bible itself is most definitely real. It exists. It's not truth, though. It's self-contradictory. It can't be truth, uh, simply by virtue of that. And the next time you see the Ten Commandments in a courtroom, look and see if all ten of them are actually there. Uh, you might find that they're not. It's just the few cherry-picked ones that we still agree with. Uh, but even if they're all there... Just because it's there, it just means someone put up a put up a display with the Ten Commandments. Uh, you know that's all it means, and uh, you know this is probably a uniquely uh, American phenomenon. Uh, I'm not sure that it is, but I suspect you'll find it a lot more often in the American Bible Belt than you'll find it elsewhere. Uh, now, thirty-seven. Why should it be wrong to rape if God is not real? Uh, why should it be right to rape if God is real? Uh, yeah, the question doesn't make any sense, does it? Uh, why should it be wrong to rape? Because we decide it's wrong. Seriously, that's, that's it. Uh, it's cruel for the victim. That seems like good enough reason for me. I don't want to be raped. So, seriously, it seems like a good enough reason. that It's just cruel. Uh but it is, in fact, evolutionarily speaking, a very good species survival strategy. Think about that if you would. I'm not condoning it, by the way. But evolutionarily speaking, it's a good survival strategy for the species. Um, 38. Why is the Passion of the Christ very high on the box office? I assume they mean uh, that it uh, brought in a lot of money. Well, the whole reason is a whole bunch of people went and paid to see it. That, that is all of it right there. This doesn't prove or disprove anything. 39. How can America not be a Christian nation if there are way more churches than mosques? Okay, this proves that we're doing this from an American-centric perspective. But anyway, uh, it quite easily. Uh, what if the dominant religion was Zoroastrianism and uh, Christianity and Islam were minorities in the single digits and christianity just happened to be more popular nine percent instead of seven percent uh that's how america could be uh, uh could have more churches than mosques and not be a christian nation uh that's not the case obviously but uh seriously uh america does not have a state uh, established religion uh, and that therefore officially means it's not a christian nation a lot of Americans believe it's a Christian nation, but it actually isn't technically. Uh, that said, there's a lot of Christian fundamentalism, so maybe America is a Christian nation de facto. But officially it's not, because it says it's not. Uh, 40. How is the Bible not real if it's the most popular book read by man? This is appeal to popularity. It doesn't prove or disprove anything. Um, and just a point on terminology, the Bible is actually real. It exists. But that doesn't make it true. Appeal to popularity does not make something true. Uh, 41. How did the moon form? Uh, one of the popular theories is that some sort of an impact caused a chunk of the Earth to break off and go into orbit around the remaining mass of the Earth. That could have happened. Uh, the actual answer, I think, is we don't actually know for sure. But what does this prove, one way or the other? Uh, 42. Did you know that famous scientists like Newton, Sir Richard Owen, Einstein, Galileo, and Copernicus were creationists? Well, yeah, I kind of did, and this is mostly because that was the prevailing belief at the time. Uh, a lot of them might have believed differently had they had any viable alternatives. Uh, but seriously, 
uh, Newton, uh, there's some evidence that his science was impaired by his devout beliefs. Uh, he believed God was the cause, so he didn't investigate further at certain points. Uh, we might have been much further ahead in, uh, in our understanding of the universe if he hadn't given up uh, and just said, oh, okay, well, God explains it. You know, and, and that's not the only situation where something like that might have happened, right? So uh, did I know that they, they were creationists? Yeah, I kind of did. Um, I didn't, don't know that Einstein was a creationist, actually, uh, for sure. Um, but that doesn't prove anything. This is appeal to authority, and uh, and in this case, an authority that isn't actually competent to speak to the thing that you're trying to use them to defend. So this still doesn't prove or disprove anything. 43, why do we not see black people come from white people? Fundamental misunderstanding of evolution right there. Uh, give it lo enough generations in the right conditions, we would probably see white people evolve darker skin. The same way black people, darker skin people, appear to have evolved lighter skin as they moved north. Um, 44. Why are fruit flies still fruit flies in lab experiments if they are claimed to prove evolution. Again, we got a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. Uh, no, at no stage, parent to child, is the, are the parent and child different species. They're always fruit flies. Um, that even if they can't, even if different uh, descendant lines can't interbreed anymore, they're still fruit flies. You can have more than one species of fruit flies. And I'm not familiar with these specific lab experiments being referenced. So I don't know if they were claimed to prove anything or not. They may have demonstrated uh, uh, evolutionary processes in action, though. But again, we got a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. Uh, 45, you should know that the Piltdown Man was a hoax used for Darwinist propaganda. Well, maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. But... It doesn't prove or disprove anything. Uh, it's because somebody perpetrated a hoax doesn't mean that the thing they were supporting is false, nor does it mean that the thing they were supporting is true. It just means that somebody perpetrated a hoax, and they probably did it for personal gain. This doesn't prove anything one way or the other. Uh, 46, why do we not see frogs turn into birds? Again, this is a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. And I don't think this needs to be answered again, because at least one previous question was almost exactly this. Uh, 47, why is Fox News dishonest if it, if it is a network run by truthful Christians? What? What does that even prove? Uh, First of all, it assumes that Fox News is dishonest, which maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Uh, it assumes it's run by Christians who are truthful. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But what does this prove or disprove? It doesn't prove or disprove anything. And 48, finally, why did Hitler fail to make a superior race if evolution is true? Again, we've got a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution and also a fundamental misunderstanding of what Hitler was up to. Hitler was trying to make a homeland for a race of people that already existed, that he believed were superior. This is what Hitler was up to, assuming I've understood history correctly. Um, so evolution didn't even really come into it. Uh, but also, fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. Uh, you can't make a superior race in less than one generation. It cannot be done. That's not how evolution works. So, like, seriously, what else is there to say about that? So, as you can see, a fair chunk of these questions are all basically the same question, phrased differently, and, they, and all betray a fundamental misunderstanding of the evolution theory, or are uh, bogged down in uh, logical fallacies, often begging the question, or non sequiturs, or aren't even related to anything and don't actually prove or disprove anything. 
So seriously, uh, this is the caliper that we see a lot for the uh, creationist uh, uh, proofs uh, that creationism is true or that Christianity is true or that the Bible is true or, or that atheism is false. It'd be easy to prove atheism false if a deity appeared and was able to demonstrate, uh, uh, you know, the power of a deity. It would, you know, that would demonstrate that atheism was not congruent with objective reality. But as it stands right now, nothing in this list of questions, at least, uh, comes even close to uh, an argument that would suggest that atheism is not compatible with objective reality so uh, there we go now i'm going to leave off here uh simply because this is running up on an hour and this is a lot longer than than most of these things that i do but when you got 48 questions uh you know and this martin baker guy clearly doesn't understand at least at the time that he put this up he doesn't he didn't understand the specific uh, problems with a lot of these uh, questions. Uh, I think he was just parroting uh, things that other people have said and so on. This has the feel of a compilation. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to leave off here. I'll just mention that I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash lostwizard where you can support my channel if you so desire. Uh, I'm not going to twist your arm into it. You'll either support me or you won't. It's your choice. Of course, you like, comment, subscribe, leave flames, whatever. Uh, and, uh, you know, generally, uh, if you want to argue uh, my points, fine. But do try to be uh, sensible and avoid uh, straw men and uh, ad hominems, because they definitely don't prove anything. But anyway, I'll leave off here. And if you've watched this far, nearly an hour in, and thank you for watching, or I guess listening, is uh, you probably don't need to watch this, but I put up the uh, web page on the screen just so you could follow along. But anyway, uh, that's all for now. Um, thanks for watching.